You're watching Minnesota Vikings now. I am Tom Downey, and I am here thanks to Aura, the presenting sponsor of today's show. They are giving you a free 14-day trial of their all-in-one online safety tool when you head over to Aura.com slash chatsports. We'll tell you all about their great product later on in today's show. Boy, there are some juicy rumors out there around the Minnesota Vikings, in particular on Nindamakin Sioux, USA Today reports that the Vikings have had, quote-unquote, multiple conversations with Sioux about signing the former Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive tackle. Well, at least I assume it was about signing because what else would you be talking to? to him about. Sue is one of the top unsigned free agents left this late in the NFL free agency process. He would be a significant addition to the Vikings defensive line as they make the full transition to a 3-4 scheme just like the Bucks used this past year. I am on board with signing Sue for Minnesota. I think it'd be a great pickup. Do you agree? Are you down to sign Indominus Sue? If you are, Show it by liking today's video. I am anticipating hundreds upon hundreds of likes on today's show. Prove me right by liking it right now. Now, Sue, despite entering his age 35 year already, is still a productive football player. Is he going to be a double-digit sack guy? Probably not. The member of the 2010 NFL Hall of Fame team is not the player he was in his prime. But he's still good at football, and he would be a fantastic veteran addition to a Vikings defense that is beginning to be overhauled in the new regime's mold. Sue is a good football player. He can stop the run and can still contribute on third downs. Are you going to be giving him 100% of your snaps? No, that is a bad idea. Not that you would ever give any defensive lineman 100% of your snaps. But as a second or third or worst case fourth option along your defensive line, that's a great addition for Minnesota. Dalvin Tomlinson, Harrison Phillips, Armin Watts were working with the ones at training or at minicamp, excuse me, and at OTAs. But I would guess that Sue ends up starting on that unit, probably over Armin Watts. You can still rotate him plenty. Don't get me wrong there. Buys you time for uh, Otome Wowo to get a little bit more acclimated to life in the NFL. Buys time for Jalen Twyman, who could be a practice squad candidate, maybe, you know. Other players flash and make the roster, but Sue gives you a proven commodity who is a scheme fit for this new Vikings defense. We're not done with this conversation quite yet. It's the, I think, number one NFL story right now with, in light of not that much going on in June. Will the Vikings sign Nindama Kinsu? This is the pinned comment on today's video. This is a prediction one. Not what you want to happen but will it, what you think will happen. Will they sign him? Why for yes and for no? If the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there, type in your why for yes or your N for no. I am totally down to sign Sue, although I'm not convinced the Vikings will be the team that ends up landing him. They can certainly make it work if they want to. The Raiders also appear to be one team in the mix that was mentioned by the USA Today report from Tyler Dragon about those two teams having multiple conversations, but it's also June. There's clearly not that much interest. And the Vikings' goal right now, despite what some media people might think, is to win football games right now. They are trying to at least be a wild card team in a not that great NFC. So here is my proposed contract for Minnesota and for Ndamukin Sioux. Pretty straightforward, one-year, $5 million deal. Not that much money. I also don't think you're going to see Sue command a lot more than that. It is late June at this point. You're not seeing players sign for 10 years, you know, or for three years, $10 million a year. These are going to be cheaper one-year deals. I'm not going to factor in potential void years. They could do that, add a fake year, and make his cap hit like 2 or $3 million this year and then eat some dead money in the future because that's how a lot of NFL teams operate. But I do think it's about the right value for Nanama and Sue. That was my contract. What is the most you would be okay paying? So let's assume it's a, it's a one-year deal. The most amount you would be down to give Sue on a contract. Speaking of money, Aura offers financial fraud protection, among other options, in their all-in-one online safety tool. How, how many of us here have had at some point their credit card or debit card compromised? Probably through no fault of your own. Somehow somebody got the information, they hacked it some way. 
Aura helps prevent that. And if you're like almost every person out there, you're shopping and banking and working and doing everything more online than ever. So use Aura to help keep your information safe. They're giving you a free 14-day trial at Aura.com slash chat sports. I'll put that link in the comment section and the description of today's video. You can cancel it at any time. So there's no reason not to try the Aura free trial. Aura.com slash chat sports. Let's talk potential roster moves beyond the Dindamakin Sue now. Could Amir Smith-Marset not make the roster? I have long been under the assumption it'll be receiver five at worst for this team. There's some special teams value there. But ESPN did a 53-man roster projection, and they left Amir Smith-Marset off the team for, I think, actually the exact reasons I would put him on there. Smith Marset was a fifth round pick in 2021, didn't make a major impact for the team. But ESPN argued, well, Albert Wilson has punt returnability, something he's never done before in the NFL. And here was their six man roster projection at receiver Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, KJ Osborne, duh, those guys are locks. I would argue BC Johnson is somewhat safe right now, Albert Wilson, the veteran, and then rookie Jalen Naylor. Now, I would put Amir Smith-Marset on the roster. Here's what ESPN argued, though. Uh, Kevin Seifert. I believe it's Seifert, not the last name. The locks here, Jefferson Thielen, probably Osborne. Johnson, BC Johnson, looked great this spring in his return from a torn ACL and would seem likely to be in line for a slot receiver role. The remaining two spots are based on youth slash upside and special teams. Naylor was a 2020 sixth round draft pick, and Wilson could serve as the Vikings punt returner. But Amir Smith-Marset has a chance as well. This is confusing to me because Amir Smith-Marset is young, was a higher draft pick than Jalen Naylor, and does offer a bit more return ability in his past than Albert Wilson, who has never returned punts in his NFL career. So it's all interesting to me. What do you think ends up happening with Amir Smith Mar Amir Smith Marset, the second-year player out of Iowa? Will the Vikings keep him or cut him? Type in K for keep or C for cut. I do think the impending roster battle at wide receiver is a fascinating one. You've got the four guys at the top, Jefferson, Thielen, Osborne, Johnson, Amir smith Marset, Albert Wilson, Jalen Naylor, and some other interesting young players, Dan Chisna, uh, Blake Prohl. You're not going to carry nine or eight or probably even seven wide receivers. The numbers game is real. So somebody, barring injuries, is going to get cut. I like Amir Smith. I like that pick a lot when he came out of Iowa. He will have to earn his roster spot, but given that he was on the team last year, was a higher draft pick and offers some special teams value, I would put him as the favorite to make the roster, at least for now. In fact, we put Albert Wilson on the roster. Oh, my boy Mitchell Renz did this video for you guys, the top players on the roster bubble for the Minnesota Vikings. You got that video. If you're subscribed, then have your notifications turned on. So make sure you do. That way you don't miss out on any Minnesota Vikings video here. Hit that big red button and subscribe. And keep your eyes peeled for our own roster projection. Different, of course, than the ones from ESPN and other major media. So if you haven't already and you want more free Vikings videos, hit that big red button and subscribe. More information coming from ESPN. Uh, they did an article bringing down every first round play, uh, pick's impact so far, which yeah, it's based on OTAs and minicamp. So Lewis seen the topic here. He got some reps with the first team during minicamp for Minnesota, although he was not the full-time starter in those reps opposite Harrison Smith. Cam Bynum still got some. I do agree with ESPN, which we we'll get to uh, the quote here from Kevin in a minute. It's a matter of when, not if, Scene emerges as a starter. Here was the ESPN write-up. Scene's top attribute, he's voted to deliver a big hit, was by definition invisible during non-contact spring drills. But he has clearly worked his way into the team's short-term plans based on the rotational work he received with the first-team defense. Scene is committed with second-year player Cameron Bynum for the starting job opposite Harrison Smith, and his coronation appears inevitable. The only question is whether it will come by week one. So what do you think happens with Lewis Seen in terms of week one? Will he be a starter or a backup slash rotational player for a team I think will utilize more three safety looks? Type S for he starts or type B for he's a backup. 
I would lean more towards he starts week one. That's why on the depth chart, I've got him as safety two with, of course, Harrison Smith at safety one. That is not anti-Cameron Bynum, by the way. I am excited for him in year two. I saw some flashes in a very small role last season. But I think seen as a first-round pick, as a pure free safety, who is not afraid to hit. He, he does offer some in-the-box stuff as well for a team that I think will utilize plenty of split safety coverage as well this year, given the Ed Donatel defensive style. I think Seen will make a big-time impact for this team. I don't know um, how obvious the hits will be. He, he is a big hitter, but you probably got to wait for the games to actually start to see that. But I am excited for Seen in year one, and I do think he is a starter in week one for this team.